so I think we're good now. Yeah. All right, go. everyone, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are actually very excited. We're going to do a live recording of a podcast. Uh, I have Guy here with me. Bro, say hi. He's muted. Of course you do that, right? As I'm mute. Hey, I'm, uh, how's everybody doing? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as I always say, when Guy's here, it usually means that we have someone absolutely amazing that we're going to have an incredible conversation with. So. I'm super excited to have Shauna Lee, who wrote a really, really cool book, which I told her offline was if I were to write a book, it would sound very, very similar to what she wrote. Um, the book is called Soul Frequency. She is here with us. And we're going to talk about everything from energy to healing to what's happening in the world. So uh, welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, before we talk about all this stuff, so people just get to know a little bit about you, I would love for you just to share a little bit about your background and what you're bringing through in the world today. Yeah, so I, for much of my life, I was attempting to live some sort of the American dream. Um, you know, like we all grew up with a lot of programming about what being successful is and what we need to do to be successful. And when I was very little, when I was soon after I was born, I um, came into this reality with two spirit guides. Um, and that was all I knew for a long time. I was an only child. So they literally would play with me. They would talk to me. They would give me information. Um, certainly it was a bit of a, a comedy, you know, situation around my house because my parents like, you know, never knew where they were. And luckily I had this amazing grandmother who was like a rose quartz wearing kind of hippie. She was a beatnik back in the day. And she told my parents, leave her alone. You know, she's experiencing other things. And so, um, you know, my, I, my spirit guide would go to sit on the couch and then my parent would go to sit down there and I would just scream like, you're going to sit on him. What are you doing? And, and so it was just very colorful. And I didn't really care until I got to be about five or six years old. And at that point, I started looking around and going, hey, nobody else is experiencing this. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to be normal at that point. I didn't, I, I shunned it and I didn't want to experience this because I felt like it made me different and it made me not fit in with other kids. And it, and it just started to cause like conflict in my reality. And what got created, like we create these in big belief sets when we're kids, what got created was just be normal like just be normal. So I went through the rest of my life just looking around for normalcy. Like, oh, okay, this person's doing this. That must be normal. And I went through life and I was a high achiever and I graduated college and I went into a career that really wasn't at all a sole passion, but it was a way I was going to make money, which was important in my family of origin as a success um, moniker. And so I just put all my efforts into that and I built a big career. And I got to a certain stage in life where I was like, I don't think I'm living my life. Like, I don't think this is what is going to ultimately fulfill me. And I think so many times in life we chase things, thinking these things are going to ultimately fulfill us. And we're told that a lot by society. And so I just got to this point where it was very clear that I had checked off a lot of boxes and that I hadn't reached fulfillment. And especially this happened for me after I got married. And um, when I became pregnant with my son, I was like, well, this, you know, now I've done everything. I've gotten married to an amazing person. I got this great career. I'm making money. I have a great house. I'm going to have a baby. Everything's going to be amazing now. And what happened was the opposite of that. And I really started to experience this feeling of this isn't my life. Yeah. And if, for anybody that's experienced that, it's a very scary feeling because we tend to stay in the same reality through most of our life. And when you start reality jumping, I like to call it, and realizing that maybe there's a different reality that you're supposed to be living in, it shakes up your world. And it certainly shook up mine. And after the birth of my son, I knew everything almost in my life had to change. And what, what happened after that was just a rapid spiritual awakening, transformation that occurred, and ultimately, it ended up with me on the floor of my son's bedroom having this incredible experience that showed me like why I'm going through this, what I'm supposed to do with all of this. And really I got my marching orders that night. And so since then I've been showing up, right? To teach people and help people and guide people in this process that I think in one area or more of our lives, we are all going through. Amen. 
Got a question for you. So I've met, uh, and I love that story. It actually reminds me of that um, Robert Downey Jr. had a movie in the 90s called Heart and Soul. Yeah. Really good movie. Really good movie, actually, if no one remembers that movie. Um, but it was, you know, in that same vein, minus the wanting to help people part. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I meet people like you fairly regularly who are having these extraordinary experiences. What would seem extraordinary, I would, I hope within this next generation, we normalize this because I think there's a lot of people going through things like this. And like you said, they get pressured into a normalization and it's like atrophy of anything else. I imagine if you like shun it, don't use it, you kind of like lose it a little bit and then you don't, you sharpen your skills. Um, some people in our family can do things like this. I've met people with extraordinary abilities. Maybe it's too broad of a question, but like, why do you think, why do you think some people are touched with this or is it everyone touched with this and you just took notice of something? Uh, well, I feel like we call this in for this lifetime, right? Like we, we choose to have these experiences to grow our soul self. I do feel like the caveat at this time on the planet is that it is a lot more prevalent and it will become more prevalent just because the energy on the planet is changing so rapidly. And we frankly need to evolve in many different ways on this planet. And we evolve through pain, right? We evolve through things happening in our life that shake up our reality. That's the only way that we change our reality. Like nobody signs up to change their reality unless there's some sort of pain, right? And, and I was just saying to a client of mine earlier, like typically we show up to personal transformation for, because we want something different for ourselves. Like we're like, I want a different job or I want to start a business or I need a new relationship. We, we sign up for sometimes very egoic reasons, right? Like, and we're in a lot of fear sometimes, like I wanna get away from something that's painful and move towards something that's better. But I think what happens along that path is we realize there's a much bigger picture of what's going on. And I was saying to my client that, that, you, that you move into this point of showing up for the vibrational shift of the planet, right? And being the energy like when we sit in meditation, when we sit in silence, right? And we hold a high vibration, not for ourselves, but for the world, right? That reverberates out onto the planet. And the byproduct of that is that wonderful things flow into your individual life. But I think that's a, that's a changeover that happens for people. I think, you know, almost everybody starts with, I want something different in my life or something feels like it needs to change. But I do feel like as more of us start to hold a higher vibration, we are assisting our brothers and sisters to come into this moment where we free ourselves of this fear that runs as this undercurrent in our mind body system. And, you know, certainly the time we are living in right now is a forced squeeze of the fear that is within us. Yeah. Right. So most of the time I talk about fear a lot and nobody signs up for fear conversations. If you say you're doing a webinar on fear, no one will show up to that. Right. <laughs> Yet it is the most important conversation we need to yeah. be having because this is what holds us in a lower vibration and the fear is running the show. When we have unconscious fear running in our mind body system, not only does it, you know, affect your physical body, affects your emotional states your mental states, but it is literally like forming the fear collective on the planet. And there's, there, the energy is changing such that there's not a place for that anymore. And so the higher vantage point of just so much that's going on right now is that we are being squeezed of that fear so that we can rise, so that we can go to another vibration because it's not synonymous with higher vibrations. So it has to move out of us. And part of the core work that I'm doing with people is helping people move that fear out of their mind body system so that they can naturally ascend to these higher frequencies. So I, I wrote uh, a few quotes down from your book that I really liked before we discussed or we even knew what we were going to talk. So I just, I find it pretty amazing. And it said, if you want to build a better life, you need to dismantle everything that doesn't work. And I think when people go into transformation from this egoic mind or when any of us want change in our lives, we have this very uh, delusional, I'm going to say, view of what that transformation is going to look like. <laughs> and we just go, oh, I'm going to, I want a new job. So it's going to look like that. Like, you know, it's going to be like this, or I want to fix my health and it's going to look like this. And it rarely, if ever 
looks the way that we want transformation to look. It's usually a lot more disturbing. Um, it, it shakes every core and belief. And I think what Guy and I keep tuning into more and more and see in the world more and more is that the world keeps pulling you as you expand to trust mm -hmm. more, to let go more. And the, there's like places where you're like, okay, I can trust and let go here. And then there's that place like right there where you're like, no, 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 I can't do that, right? Like, like it's, it's comfortable to let go and trust in my little box, but not over here. And so I love that you say that like people sign up and then it doesn't ever show up the way they really wanted to. So I don't know if we want to jump into this now. Obviously, like there is a, we're experiencing this on a global scale right now. Like, you know, Guy said this, this great line the other day. It's like, this is the first thing that has no discriminatory action. It doesn't care if you're white or black, male or female, come from this country or that country, have this amount of money or that amount of money. It just like, you all, you all get to be a part of this party. Um, so it really is like a human, it's devolved all borders. And I know it's crazy, like we've closed some borders, so I'm not saying that, but like it's, it's a human issue for the first time that we all have to take notice of. So I'm curious in the, in the realm of like micro, macro, all that stuff, what's your take on it? Because I like that thing that you said about the squeezing the fear out because right now it feels like the collective is in a tidal wave, tsunami style fear. So I'm just curious like where, where you're at with all this. So there's a couple different, you know, obviously life becomes very multidimensional when you're seeing into like the different energetics of things. So we have past lives. So we've experienced things like this before, mm -hmm. right? And some of us um, are at various levels of like how we exited that life and whether we saw something come to a better place or whether we exited during a time of upheaval and chaos. And that's stored right in our mind body system and our yeah. history and our past lives. So we have a re triggering going on on that level. I love that. Right? For a lot of people. Then we have like this awesome, and I call it opportunity. And I say opportunity not to discredit the fear and the difficulties that people are going through because I feel how real they are. Like, I feel. If I really expand my energy, I can feel so much, it can put me in bed, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have an option about how we're going to process this and look at it. And I think choice is the number one thing as human beings that we have on our side. We can choose the lens through which we look at this situation. If we choose the lens of fear, right? It takes us down. It takes our immune system down, right? It makes our body like lose its strength. I mean, there's so many ways we're affected that are not helpful in this time. Or we can choose to say, what is the bigger picture of why this is going on at this time? And really, what is within me that I can take a look at? So what's happening for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people... Um, have fear about being alone, right? Or have fear about pulling out of life. Like if they said, you need to stay home for two weeks, for some people, that is really challenging, not just financially or business-wise, but just person-wise. Like, what do I do with myself, right? Hmm. And this is an opportunity to look at, if we feel those feelings, like maybe it's an opportunity to get to know yourself, right? To go within, to rely on something inside of ourselves. You know, so often we're looking at relying on everything outside of us. Like, you know, our government's going to take care of us or the healthcare system's going to take care of us or that person needs to take care of us. We're so busy giving all of our power to things outside of ourselves to make our lives better that this is an opportunity to say, what can I do within myself, right? To see the power that we all have as individuals. Like when I look into somebody's energetic system, like anybody, it blows my mind the power that I see. It blows my mind each and every time. I don't care how many times I've done this. I'm just like, wow, like totally in awe hmm. of what one human consciousness in a human body is capable of. And I'm always in awe of how much we don't see that within ourselves, <laughs> yeah. right? And how we just literally like miss that because we're so busy thinking of other people, throwing our energy other places, like being pulled around by forces outside of us 
that we are not standing on our own foundation. And I think one of the bigger lenses that we can look through is how to create that foundation for ourselves, that foundation of beingness, that foundation of health, that foundation of consciousness, the foundation of being able to go within, right? And, and source power from within, and also then to hold a higher vibration in support and love of the other people on the planet that are maybe right now working through a lot of their fear and having a lot of this rise to the surface. And so, you know, we have the choice is really what it's about, like how we frame this for ourselves. And what is unprecedented about this time is that we're so interconnected by the internet. Yeah. Right. So, so not only do people have their own individual fears, but we are literally processing the fears of all other people as yeah. they're sharing their fears. And, and so, you know, energetic, like kind of boundaries are really important at this time, like making sure we're not taking in everybody else's stuff, especially if you are a sensitive person or an empath, like there's a very, there's a way to hold love and peace and energy for the planet but it doesn't mean you need to absorb everybody's everything and allow that to kind of take you down. So there's a awesome. couple of things that I think are so critically important to the future of humanity that we are learning from this experience and going to learn from this experience. And I just, I hold everybody in such high love. I myself, um, in, I'm sitting in silence. I'm sitting in prayer, like more hours per day than normal, just holding the vibration. And I think those of us, that have tapped into that and know how to do that. It's really important we all do that at this time. Oh, so beautiful. I got chills, especially with that, that last piece that you just mentioned. Yeah, it's, um, I wrote a post today. I was like, the collective is being, it really, I see it as a choice and it's like dark and light, right? And like, it doesn't take that many candles to light up a dark room. And there's, I'm going to be, I'm going to call out myself on it too. Like even with all the education and all this stuff, like you can just feel this pull that the mind has yep. that it wants to just latch on to all of that stuff. Like it wants to go down the fear train. It wants to like do all of these things. And just, you know, when you said the word choosing fear, choosing that it, to me, it almost felt like the autopilot it's it's like the it's defaulting in that way. It's not really a choice. It's just this like pull and having enough awareness to go, whoa, pump the brakes, like let let's just sit here and be. And even me, I felt just the other day, like I it, I went into the swirl and sitting in connection with our mentor helped me just kind of like re or deregulate my system and just like bring myself back into that that centeredness and i realized how important it is for us in this time to have that energetic connection yeah to find ground and stability of someone who can sit and hold peace and well-being because it's so easy to just fly off the handle you read this one article you hear this thing da 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 da, da and next thing you know your mind is going all these places i had an interesting visual that I'd love to just share here and, and see where you guys take this. I was sitting there and I was really sitting with this part that was freaking out, like, like a terrified little boy. Right. And it felt like the, the ground under me was just coming apart. And I, he, he was like trying to grab at stuff, but nothing happened. And then the visual I saw was this every other time that he's gotten peace, he can like look into the future and even if shit is crazy, he can kind of create a future. Like it was like the, the movie projection kind of went on and the visual I saw was, it was like, there's a projection and mm -hmm. then there was black. Yeah. It was, it was if like he couldn't see into the future past this moment. Yeah. And he freaked the fuck out. Like it was, I was just holding this part inside and it was just, freaking out. And I realized like, Oh my God, it's this. And maybe that's what's happening with the collective. It's really this place of like, no one fucking knows. Yeah, no one, there is no truth. There is like, no one knows where this goes. And maybe that's, what's creating that like crazy energy of just fear and panic. So I don't know. I'm going to let you guys. 
It does feel like that. It feels like we're staring a little bit into a void when you can't predict. I mean, I was tuning into like how Monday felt in comparison to how Friday feels or mm-hmm. even yesterday. Like Monday was kind of like, uh, you know, spiritual bypassing. <laughs> day. Right. Like, you know, like omnipositive, everything's going to be fine and, and all that. And, you know, like, and then there's like this caution that's rising in the background by Thursday. I woke up, I'm driving in the car in California where I live, it, like never rains and it is pouring rain for the next eight days. Yeah. like pouring it's dark skies like crazy rain like we've never seen and i'm driving and california looks dead when it's raining because people don't go outside which yeah. <laughs> um but it has this like ominous feel to it right i'm like man this is like like hollywood situation here but that that is the thing like every time that part of us that likes to future project like it knows what's coming it's the same part that when you twist the doorknob knows that the doorknob twists this way and then the door pulls out. And if that doesn't happen, you have that moment at the door when you try to push instead of pull and it doesn't work. And you're like, oh, and I say, it's not that we get surprised. We're surprised that we get surprised. <laughs> yeah. on this trick on you. And so we're in the situation where it's like, you can't predict tomorrow or 48, or 48 hours from now, or maybe even six months to a year from now, what life on this planet is going to look like. And it does have the potentiality of maybe dramatically changing it from the world that we've known for, for quite a while now. So there's that piece I have felt. And I think this goes even to what you said about your son. There was a, the 2012 gate, which was interesting that your son came at that time. People looked at it like the end, but it was really the end of something in the beginning of something else. As far as I know about that period, it was the turning point of more light energy than dark energy on the planet for the first time in like 25,000 year period, which is pretty dramatic. So then you have all these kids coming in, right? Like you're, you're kidding. I'd love to hear some more stories about that if you want to share them. And I, maybe it was right around that time too, that I started to get these hits. There were like feelings in my body that then got reaffirmed through vision and experience uh, over the last eight years that 2012 was, uh, sorry, the 2020 was going to be a major turn, turning point on this planet. And I, I've been telling Elon for years, clients, family members, friends, I'm like, something's coming this year, like an event. I don't know what the event is, but my feeling was, and this is going to be a little bit funny. I'm like, it's either going to be a collapse of systems, uh, a spiritual awakening experience. I'm like, I don't even care if the whole planet farts at one time. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, something that would be like, oh, all of humanity had an experience together. And suddenly we have the collapse of systems and this thing. So I'm like, on the surface, right, from the way the mind looks, and we don't even understand bacteria. We think we do. We don't understand viruses. We think we do. They don't even call, like, viruses have no evidence to cause pathology at all. It's an it's environmental and how you keep this domain that will have more to do with pathology than, than than viral infection. So, and again, you guys can check my science on this, but I'm I'm talking from people who are way smarter than me in these fields who have taught me these things. And so here we are in the situation that is forcing these kind of outcomes. And I think a lot of us do want particular change. However, we're energetically tied to systems that we're so afraid to let go of including capitalism and commercialism and convenience of things. But it's like if tomorrow the entire uh, hotel luxury vacation industry goes under and we're all forced to be in communities again because we're not traveling around so much anymore because that's not what we got to do. Or we got to stay in like in our own systems with around our families and actually connect with one another because that's not what we're doing today. And all these things that like force in a way, not force, but are gently coaxing spiritual practice back into our lives um as scary as the future might look we're extremely adaptable creatures and for the world that i think most of us would like to see come tomorrow something needs to drastically happen to shake up these really strong systems which is kind of what's happening right now so it's a very very interesting time to be alive and i say win lose or draw this is probably the best ticket we will ever buy in a human in a human meat suit (laughs) you know bring it on and 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 the other thing is i see is like so, um, and last piece, and then I, I want you to like add things about your child and any other experiences you have is like that this virus is not touching children. The wise little children, the star, the star children that are coming here with all this information and suddenly bring through all this wisdom that are so much smarter than us. And this thing is not even touching them. So I've been wondering for a while as the population of the planet seems to be exploding and you have souls that are choosing to come into physical form that was part of my, my hit was why would all these souls be coming for a front row seat to the end of the world? They're, co- they're coming for something else mm. they're coming for the beginning of the new world. Um, because I know that I would want to be there when the new world starts. So yeah, that's, that's you, my piece. You, you are. 
yeah, yeah. That's my piece. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's awesome. It's great points. And I want to give context to transformation because whether we're going on a personal transformation journey or whether we're going on a global transformation journey, um, we like as human beings love to add things to our life, right? We like to add to our calendar. We want to add amazing people. We want to add money. We want to add all of these things. We are literally terrified of subtraction equations, right? Yes. About what needs to be released. And we change our vibration by release, period. So it is what needs to go, right? We have a naturally high vibrational state until we learn belief systems have traumas, experiences that happen that cloud that. So it's what needs to be released in the form of either emotions, like things we're doing in life, what's not working, what's not in alignment anymore, that actually changes our vibration, right? And at a higher vibration, we don't resonate with disease, right? We don't resonate with disease states. So the children on the planet are very high vibration. They also are not in the belief system of what's going on because they just don't know and they don't care. They want to play Legos or dolls or whatever. They're not sitting there going, the coronavirus, the coronavirus, right? <laughs> or anything else like that might be going on, you know, on our planet. They, they don't buy in mentally, right? And we know science has proved the power of belief, right? The power of the buy-in to this. And so we have to think, I think this is an opportunity to think more holistically, right? Not just is my physical body going to catch an illness, but what is my buy-in to this, right? What do I believe about this? What is being input into my consciousness or my mind-body system, my conscious mind about what's going on? And am I locking up to that belief, right? As if it's absolute fact, hmm. because as you go to higher frequencies, you have much more access to information, yeah. right? Lots of information, information that some of it's not even on the planet at the time, right? And when you have access to that infinite possibility and more information, you stop holding on so tight, right? To a small piece of information that's available here on earth. So it greatly changes the reality lens that you're looking through, right? And all transformation, like causes us to walk up to the threshold of fear. So you talked about like not knowing what's in the future and it being black. And I will tell you that when I went through my personal transformation, I can't even tell you the amount of fear that came up for me that I had to move through, like terror, totally. this out and out terror. And I had this visualization that I was slipping through a tunnel and I would put out like a, a tube, right? And I would put out my arms and legs to like stop the slip and I couldn't stop it. And what I learned from this visualization that kept occurring for me and all the terror that was coming up is that it wasn't terror. Like at the time I might've been like, well, this is happening in my life or that's happening. Therefore I'm in terror and fear. That's not true. It was the terror and fear from all of the things, this life and before it, that needed to come out of my body as I was going to a different frequency because it was no longer of resonance there. And so I needed perspective on that. I needed to understand that I was offloading stuff because so many times when we're offloading stuff, we think we're re-triggering, right? And we think we're circling in it and we don't have somebody guiding us to how to offload it so that we, we move forward, right? And so as I was going through this myself, which is largely what I feel like a lot of people are experiencing that have never experienced it before, yeah. I, it was a death and rebirth situation, right? It felt like death. And I remember a conversation because again, when you're experiencing this and nobody else in your family or really your life is experiencing this, you are so acutely aware that you are in a totally different reality than other people. Other people are getting up, going to their job. You know what I mean? We changed a lot of things about our life and people were like, so you moved houses. So you downsized. So you did this. I'm like, we didn't just downsize. Like I detonated my entire reality and now I'm trying to figure out what the new reality is. Like, but people couldn't even understand that. Sure. Like it didn't even process for them. Right. So here I'm going through this. And I remember one time sitting on the couch with my mother who just thought I had lost my mind because <laughs> who walks away from a career that you've built and all this stuff. And, you know, she's con literally concerned about my mental state, I think at the time. And I was just sobbing. And I said, you don't understand. I'm like the person you knew died. I'm like, 
I offloaded like all of the programming you had taught me, right? All this stuff that kept me playing small, like all this had to go for me to step into who I really am. And while I'm still discovering that, like you, you need to understand that the person that all the things that you say that I am is gone. And that was my experience. It was gone. And so we, again, are afraid of not only releasing things or subtracting things, but horribly afraid of any kind of death experience, whether it's, you know, death of parts of our ego, death of, you know, a relationship, a career, like we basically run from those things at all costs. And there's something that happens for those people who have been through this in one way or another. And I, I don't think we get out of the human experience without death touching us, whether it's a death of a loved one, you know what I mean? We all are going to have to move through various deaths. And mm -hmm. if we can learn to do that in a healthy way, like move that emotion out, fully express that emotion, right? Have that healing experience then your whole perspective about how you move through life changes. The level of fear that you feel in things changes because once you've been through that once, you're like, oh, I can go here. I can dive right in the middle of my emotions. I can feel them fully. I can process them out of my body, right? They're just energy that needs to move. And if we have amazing mentors and teachers to hold our hands through those processes, we become not only stronger as an individual, like we become way more connected to infinite possibility, way more connected to miracles, and way more connected to what's being birthed, like you said, through the new generations that are coming on this planet, because it's something that is vastly different than generations before. And they need us to wake up yeah. because they're still young, right? And they need people that are at least going to start to get it, right? Especially as parents, those people that are parents, to guide them. Instead of saying, you need to be how society is now, we need parents that are like, what's the wisdom? Like, what are you coming in with? Like, okay, can you, you, can you read my mind? Can I read your mind? Like, are we connecting on this level? Because it needs to be normalized right? Like their inability to sit still a lot of times, right? They're in a, they're a massive amount of energy that these children have. They're like barely in their body, right? Like these kids have so much energy and, and we can't say like, be quiet. You should be able to sit for three hours at a time. I mean, it's totally contradictory to the skill set they need yes. to live on this planet as yes. adults. Sure. Yes. So yeah, I mean, well said. I, 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 would echo that greatly. And again, with children, right? Like trying to conform what it's like to raise a child. Like I have a 16 month old at home and he's like you said, just a ball of energy. And of course there's like the whole stigma, right? Get him down to sleep for 12 hours. And I understand that in a world that works, but we both work from home. So like none of that has felt in alignment for us and the kid doesn't sleep. Like yeah. 20, mine doesn't either. 20 minute all. nap. Good for the no. day. Like that's no. it. No, my child, yeah, my child did not sleep like at all as a baby. He wouldn't go in a swing. He didn't want, it's like, he used to look at his arms and legs like, what is this? This doesn't work. Until he could walk, he was basically like ticked off about it. Yeah. But still to this day, like he didn't nap. He doesn't sleep like very much. He stays up super late. Like you cannot get him to go to sleep. Wow. Like, you can't like we would be like Shh, power down your brain jameson power down your brain he's like i have so many ideas and these kids also like my son when he was five and he was in kindergarten he's like i'm not sure i need to come to kindergarten i'm like why he's like i already know what i'm going to do with my life he says i'm going to build tall buildings i'm going to design cities like i already have the designs in my head and so i don't they want me to do things in a different way than i know how to do them and my way is better like at five right i'm Boy, we're gonna have a long road ahead of him, <laughs> right? Mommy signed up for a good one. Yeah, but it's interesting because I had a mentor at one time tell me that he actually has blueprints encoded into his beingness right. of buildings that he will create in the future. So he is accurate in saying that he already has, right, the knowledge of what he's coming here to create and build for people. And he also knows like these kids know specialization so we are taught we were taught when we were young like we need to know all the subjects and we need to be good at everything right and try to be a well-rounded person these kids are more about i know my role in the whole and i also know the power of working collectively and so i don't need to learn every other thing i need to stay in my lane on what i came here to do 
And then there'll be other people that fill in these other roles. Yeah. And so when we're trying to like go, well, you're a science guy, but you need to learn, you know, you need to learn like literature. You need to, they're just like, what are you talking about? That's a waste of my time. My time should be spent specializing in what I'm great at. It's, it's so interesting though. Cause like you think of this old generation, they created safety. Well, the illusion of safety from that, right? Like the degree in school, the go to college, like all that stuff that was programmed. And these kids come in and even the millennials that everyone has issues with have basically thrown all of that out the window. They're like, F this. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I want to find myself. I want to find the things that light me up. And to every kind of like old generation thinking, not age, just like older generation thinking, they're idiots. They look at them and they're like, you're a bunch of lazy ass idiots. And I think all of us kind of see it differently. And I'm not saying that there aren't those, but there's lazy people in every generation. Mm -hmm. There is this thing that they're all pulling us towards. And I just love that you have that ability as a mom to let them know that that's exciting. Not just okay. Just like, that's incredible. Let's keep exploring that versus like, hey, you need to be on our roll so you can sit here and do the things that everyone tells you to do, which is just, it's so sad. Um, and maybe, maybe this whole thing that we're experiencing is to kill off this very old school way of thinking, this old vibration that's on this planet. And when, look, I know a life is a life. I'm not, I'm not demeaning that by any stretch of the imagination, but maybe that's like what's happening. It's just this big ass. We get to elevate this frequency because if you have a bottle cap, like, you know, say, say all these light workers are doing all these amazing things. And then there's this bottle cap sitting on top of it. And then you remove this bottle cap. It's like, what's possible at that point. Maybe that's what we all get to explore. Yeah, it is. And it's, and it's really looking at like how we honor and foster not only the mental health, but the emotional health of these yeah. children. Because when we are trying to shape children sometimes into something, and because life is moving so quickly, like the generations are changing so exponentially um, that we really have to be careful, like all of us, that we're really seeing them right? And we're really asking them what their experience is like and letting them share. Cause like we were talking about earlier, they're super wise. And when you get down at eye level with them and you start talking to them, once they get to the age where they can communicate, it's so important to listen to their experience because again, they are wisdom keepers, right? And they already intrinsically know about where things are going, right? And we have to learn from them as much as they have certain things to learn from us. And so I'm not saying it's just like, you know, free reign. I think it's an element of respect that is so important is like respecting their wisdom, them learning to respect you. And what I found is the kids of these younger generations, they don't just respect because someone tells them to respect they will respect you when you respect them, right? Absolutely. It's a two way street. And so many of the like pushing up against parents or behavior problems that are going on is like, you're not really hearing me, right? Or you're not honoring my emotions, or you need to look at your own emotions and your own self and the way you're living your life. And I'm reflecting that back to you, yep. right? I am the mirror for you. And so if we take on as parents, all of us, right? Even the most conscious of parents, like, what is the reflection that my child is giving me and what can I learn from this and how can I get down eye to eye with them and have some real conversations about life? Because when you build that respect at a young age, that's only going to continue to foster and grow. And they, like I said, they are symbiotic. So there is a natural chemistry in them about respecting. You respect what I do and I'll respect what you do and we'll work well together. Yep. Not you impose all of your thoughts and ideas right. on me and tell me I'm wrong because I'm a little kid when I'm looking at you knowing I have wisdom that you don't have, right? Just because of the vibration that they're coming on to the planet with. So it's just a really important um, conversation that I feel very passionate about. And I feel like my son has taught me um, that this is such an important conversation we need to be having as much as possible because again, when we see kids in conflict or kids struggling, which there are many, 
we've got to go back to where are they not being heard, yeah. right? Where are they not being honored? Where are they not seeing their own value? Because otherwise everybody suffers, right? When a child is in a bad state, everybody is suffering in that experience. And it's not, again, changing the vibration on the planet in the ways that needs to happen for us to evolve. Yeah. Beautiful. I, uh, I want to touch on a few things you mentioned. Um, uh, so last night, I, again, I have a 16 month old who's wakes up a bunch. So <laughs> I, have, I have time to sit in bed and, and because of a lot of practices I've learned over the last three years, I don't sit in bed and mull. I sit in bed and feel I go through a lot of these energetic practices, look from higher vantage points, let energy liberate and free from my body. And then I usually ask questions once it's liberated. And so I got to ask the question, I'm like, you know, what is this all about? And the answer was like, there's, there's no birth without death. It was very clear, just like that. I was like, clear. And it's like, again, we have this very bad relationship with death in the West, where in the East, it's a really, really different thing that they talk about a lot. In the West, it's like avoided, kind of like taboo, because no one wants to like, you know, imminently think about that kind of stuff. But it, it's such an important, crucial part of life. And our understanding of it and dynamically what happens to us and to the energy of us is probably really misinformed. Um, and then the other thought I had through was, I wonder what Corona means. Cause there's always like a tie to these things. Right. So I, can I read this to you guys real quick? Yeah. And the second part will be more important than the first part. And I'm sure there's meaning in different languages. Um, so the Corona, the rarefied gaseous envelope of the sun and other stars that most people probably know, but this is what I really like. The sun's Corona is normally visible only during a total solar eclipse when it is seen as irregularly shaped pearly glow surrounding the darkened disc of the moon. Okay. So a few things I really highlight over there, rarely seen. Okay. So it can't be seen until a certain event happens, which is a full eclipse of the moon, which is during a darkened period. And then when it is seen, irregularly shaped, right? It doesn't have a form, which is kind of what we're talking about. This like formless state that scares the shit out of us and is surrounded by darkness. There's like this light that's going to be surrounded by darkness. And I think that kind of echoes the time that we're in right now because there is this big change, change of the guard, so to speak, kind of like what we're talking about, this differentiation between um, how adults were raised, which was like child rearing was all about obedience, breaking the child. So it's, you know, understandable why they look at children right now. And they, instead of seeing their unique gifts from the intuition, they're like, you don't understand this world. So let me tell you about this world. And it's like, well, you don't really know about this world either. <laughs> you know, a narration of this world and narration keeps changing. And these children are in a completely different narrative than you are. And, and yet we have, you know, uh, things like nationalism, and fascism, and all these different things that are, are, seem to be on the rise. But like you said, when we're going through a transformative experience, you're going through your own death cycles, this fear. And, and on the global scale, I feel like that's what we're seeing too. It's like this, like, pull back to the old, but it's really just about look because you've never seen it this way before. And you've never gotten to see it while there was light outside. It was all these things were playing in the darkest corners, you know, and it got, and it had places to hide. And suddenly it's like, here it is. And everybody can see. And there's an element of that, that is like, it gets to be burned off because it's being seen. So it, it feels like this maybe decade <laughs> we're, we're in for it with these kind of experiences where it is going to be a lot of fear. But like you said, where we view from really matters. And when you start understanding states of consciousness, and I don't want to call it like a hierarchy, like it's up or down or left or right, or, you know, cause you could look at it horizontally and vertically, but like, let's say when you're from a logical point of view, when you're looking at it from a higher state, life changes depending on the observer and where the observer is observing from. We know this phenomenon mm -hmm. from quantum physics and like where the photons change direction and location based on the viewpoint. When you're looking at things from higher states, so to speak, you can actually see the awareness from within, the awareness from without, the awareness expanded. And it radically alters the way that reality is responding to who's viewing reality. And the more of us that are baselining this new frequency, we're kind of like cutting the grooves and making it more bioavailable for everybody. I do think now more than ever, it's, it's why Elon and I started holding like meditation vigils online where we're just, it's basically about just creating ground in the system while everything is flying off the fucking handle because there's a strength that comes along with that, that you can actually build like a muscle within yourself that helps you expand this awareness and actually makes it more aware, more available for everybody. Just like people passing the coronavirus makes it more available for everybody. <laughs> so it's like right now, I think while the fear is there, having, having people who are holding stability in the field is going to make it so much more available for people because they're, they're, um, 
their weapons are down, their defenses are down. They're so vulnerable to what's happening right now. You can't stop this by doing anything. Yeah. So uh, it, it really is this like interesting juxtaposition and dichotomy of honestly how everything in the universe always is. It's a giant freaking paradox. When it's the scariest is when there's the most opportunity. When everything is dying is when there's the most newness, right? So I think that's kind of what we're up against. Yeah, and the interesting part that you bring up is like, it's fascinating from an energetic, like when I look into somebody's field, right? Like it's almost looking into a computer system. Like I am looking at, I see strings that are tied to different things, lots of different strings. So I'm looking at belief sets that were created. I'm looking at belief sets that are not even that person's that come through their lineage. So things that, you know, their mother, grandmother, father, grandfather came through their lineage and they are taught are theirs, right? So they believe they are their belief sets. I'm looking at how and when they are created and then how they're affecting present day. Right. So someone will say, I want to change this about my life or change that about my life. And you're looking at these ties. Right. And what's fascinating about it is that mostly and at the beginning, when you point out the connection, the energy on the connection line starts to dissipate. Yep. So it's the unconscious things, connections, beliefs, the, the, the programming that we operate out of. We are programming like I mean, a computer is very much built based on how human beings are built. And we talk about patterns and programming like they're all negative and they just are. And positive patterns and programming that lead to the things you want in your life that are in truth for you are great, right? So we don't want to throw out patterns and programming. We just want to know what patterns and programming we're running that are affecting our life, right? In a way that doesn't feel good to us or in alignment with our truth. So when I bring something up to the point of awareness, that energy starts to dissipate on its own before we ever even take an action. Exactly. And action is important, but we have to realize like when you are, what you said, Guy, and what I'm adding to, like this is the power of our thoughts and our beliefs, right? I can dissipate energy or you're dissipating the energy the second I tell you about something. That's right. Now think about that from a global standpoint of what we believe about this virus or anything that happens on the planet, right? Look at the collective belief that was fed to us by people and media that causes people to make actions based on fear that causes things to start tumbling in a certain direction. This is a collective decision-making process right. triggered by fear that is setting things in motion, let's say with our economy, let's say with you know, our government. Now think about the flip side of that, because if it works that way, it works the other way. So what if a collective amount of people started thinking and believing in a new direction, right? Started, like we said, holding that frequency for the planet and started making choices from that. So choices about how we take care of our body, mm -hmm. choices about how we fuel ourselves, choices about how we show up for other people. The same exact thing happens in the other direction, right? And yet we think the only power is when it happens out of our control in a negative direction. So one of the things, like I do a very specific meditation that has certain frequencies of sound that attune ourselves to these higher frequencies, and people can get it. They can go to the soul, S O U L, frequency.com forward slash mind. If we all are listening to things like this and attuning ourselves to a higher frequency, right? Then we are starting to call in this other evolution. It's like taking it, I call it the difference between an upward spiral and a downward spiral. Yep. And I talk about in the book, you know, how we create all things, right? The creation equation in the soul frequency book, we use that creation equation thoughts, feelings, actions equal experience for the good or for the negative, right? Like, let me give you an example. Let's say somebody has struggled with their weight and they want to lose weight, but they start thinking, oh, it's never going to happen. It's not going to work. I've tried before. And then they couple that with feelings of despair and anger and resentment and sadness. And it starts creating this energetic downward spiral. And then all that spiral does is cause them to take a, an action that's in alignment with it. So they think, oh, forget it. I'm just going to go get the burger and the shake and the fries. This is never going to work anyways. And then they eat that. And then they have the same experience that they've had that, that has happened in the past. The same equation, let's say we want to get healthy and we start thinking, I am healthy. I know that I'm healthy. The core of who I am is health. 
And we start basically fueling that with thoughts of like joy and happiness. And I can see the future vision of my healthy, already healthy in my consciousness body. And then we feel inspired to have a salad or go to a yoga class or be around people that lift us up. And then the experience of who we are changes, right? We might start losing weight. We might start glowing differently or feeling better. Yeah. Like every single one of us has access to this at every moment. Yeah. Like it is so, in, like when I, when my guides like talk to me, they're like, if people only knew that they are creating, right, the things in their reality and how they create it and that the same tools they're using are the same tools to create something different, we're living in a different playground Absolutely. at that point. And so we have to, this goes back to taking back your power, right? From thinking everybody else is going to make it better or make it worse, right? Everybody else is out there to get you or everybody else is out there to save you. It's yeah. all the same, right? When we come back into ourselves, and we like, when I look into people's energetic system, when I started doing that, I was like, if I'm seeing this in every single person, then I'm not powerful too. Like it blew my mind when I started to turn it back on myself mm. and go, if I'm seeing this in all the people I work with, then mm. it lives in me too. And I was like, holy moly. Like now I just called myself up to something much bigger. And that is my one message that I want to leave on everyone's hearts is right now, today, you can shift that all right? You can shift that all within yourself. You can't maybe change the whole world and what's going on out there. But let me tell you, by changing what's going on in here, you support the world in ways you can't understand. Yes. Yeah. It all starts, that's, that's the part, I think when we see these huge, huge macro events, it, it makes us get lost in that. And it makes us feel so helpless. You're like, I can't do anything, right? Like, I, there's nothing I can do. And you hit it right on the head. It's, it always starts with home. And the reason that we started doing these meditations just to have people like come in, it's because I know that if you're finding your core, if you're finding your ground, you create well-being here. Then you walk into your home, whether it's with your husband, wife, children, whomever. You're now carrying that imprint and bringing that level of peace and well-being into your home, which could otherwise be impacted by all this chaos. And then that, like these little beings that we have around us, it's so beautiful how energetically in tune they are. And I have these moments with, <laughs> um, specifically with my daughter, cause like my son and I operate similarly. My daughter operates like on a different, different energetic frequency and just, way more emotion based. And I feel like from a very young age, she's done these things where she, I call it, she's like tuning me up, right? She's like, we'll find this thing. And she's like, right there. And the initial, the initial hit that I get, it gets so angry. I get so annoyed. I get so frustrated. And I, it's this feeling of like, I'm talking at her, but nothing is making a difference, right? It's just like spiraling her out of control. So then I at least have enough awareness to go, okay, time out. You go here, like, and I'll put myself and I just sit and I'm like, okay, what is she trying to show me? And then I'll do that inner work and I'll release, like you were saying, like, I'll release that energy. I'll find that part that's just maybe upset that, I'm, you know, I'm being ignored. And it's like, it has nothing to do with her. It's just my little boy part who's like, you're not paying attention to me. Right. And like, I go and I heal that part and I, and I come back and I swear this happens like so often she won't say anything. She will just run up to me and give me this huge hug. It's like, you did it, Abba. Like you got it, you know? Yeah. And then we just keep playing these games. Like she keeps, my son does it too. And it's just, I know that when I'm holding that energetic space, they're like little kittens. They just want to be around me all the time. They're like, they, they're fighting to be on top of me. And Guy and I are doing this amazing course. And I came back from the course and for like three straight days, because this course is all about like attunement and alignment. And for three straight days, Fanny's like, my wife's like, what the fuck? Like, I take care of them for the entire weekend while you're out in this course. And then for three days, I'm like, baby, it's not even anything that I'm doing. It's just this, this frequency. So yeah. 
I so agree with you, Shauna. Like, I didn't believe for a long time that I had these abilities. I just didn't. I was like, I could see all these wizards and, you know, magicians like doing it out there. I'm like, they were just gifted this power. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. And now the more I've just switched that story to like, we all have it. We all have it. I'm watching these little beings. They have it on, uh, without doing anything. They're not paying coaches or <laughs> out there reading. Like they're just programmed in. So it's like, if they have it, then we all have it. And it's, what are you doing on your day-to-day -day basis to hone in these gifts that allow you to like go out and live this tremendous life regardless of what is happening out there? It's sometimes what gets in the way is the simplicity of it all. Like it's so simple. It just takes practice, but it really is simple. And the mind's like, it can't be that simple. It can't be just like sitting here and noticing and like, it can't be, I need to figure out this formula, but it really is that simple. <laughs> it's so true. I used to think like, um, I never meditated or anything. And I'm just like, what's the point of sitting there silent? Like I used to think that, and I'm like, what is that going to do? It's just going to, you know, I have got stuff to do. I'm busy. I need to do this. It's like, I saw no value in it. And it's like, you know, the universe laughs when then down the line, they're like showing you, you know, piece by piece of the value in it. And you're like, you know, way more than anything I'm going to physically do, me sitting in silence is so much more, like on every different level, like, yeah. like man, helps you manifest more, like changes the world, changes your energy, like helps you tap into infinite possibility, answers all your questions, yes. like, I mean, just everything. But it's like, I, I always, my heart always goes out and I honor people that are like, I don't have time to do that. What's the importance of that? Because I remember yep. being yeah. in that place and I'm like, you know, at some point in the evolution, we all kind of tap in and go, wait a second. I think I got this one wrong. <laughs> 5,000 year technology can't be that wrong. I'm sure it's been right. around a lot longer than that. My, my one, my one like bright spot when I was a little bit worried and not worried and not even a little bit, I was like really having my little nervous little breakdown about this, you know, shit storm that's coming our way potentially. Um, I was thinking, well, if I sit at home a lot, it's going to give me a lot of time to meditate. And I'm really excited about that because You froze. Oh, it was going to be so good. You froze, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. We'll give him, give him a second here to see if he comes back. Sometimes. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's frozen mid thought. He, I think the but brain what just he's saying is so brilliant. Cause I I'll just extrapolate. Not that it, this was exactly what he was saying, but if we have extra time on our hands and we're home, and we're not engaging, you know, in the normal activities that we would. I mean, it is a phenomenal time to sit in meditation yes. or in silence and also to like refuel your body. Like if you're going to be home, sleep more, eat good stuff, like get ready for whatever the next level is in your life. Like what is it that wants to be created through you? I always ask the question like, what wants to be created through me? Because sometimes oh, we have question. trouble with what do I want to create? And we have blocks to that. But it's just like, what's the energy? What's the natural desire or truth that wants to be created through me at this time? And then you go and you get in silence and you listen, right? And you start to get the ideas. And sometimes people go, well, I get ideas when I'm quiet. I'm like, those are higher ideas. Those are good ideas yeah. to listen to. Those are little, and sometimes they come in bits and pieces. Most of the time they come in bits and pieces, right? And so your job is just to be a recorder of the bits and pieces. Like, don't filter them through any system. Totally. Just have a place where you write down, like, this came through, this came through, this came through. And what I find more times than not is it's a puzzle that's being created, right? Yep. You're, being, you're being given these little gifts. And at some point in time, your consciousness goes, oh, I get how this all comes together and what I'm supposed to create here. And if you're getting information like that, you're always going to be supported in creating that. Uh -huh. So I talk about the land of little miracles, like living in a zone of miracles. And the higher frequencies, miracles just are the way that works, right? What we call miracles. But there are so many instances, and especially at this time where people are in a lot of fear, realizing that there is a place of miracles where miracles happen, right? Like consistently the universe is showing up for you. And 
that's a beautiful place to be in. And you can get there by silence and meditation and seeing that everything's happening for you and lining up for you when you're listening to the guidance. Yeah. And, and the, the only piece I can add is that a lot of people will get these messages and dismiss them. They're like, oh, that's crazy. That doesn't make logical sense. Or they'll get a piece and they won't take action on it because they need to like understand the entire picture. Like they need to see the entire puzzle. And what I have found from my experience is take action on it. Even yes. if it's like a small little action, that action could be like, hey, I got this download today and you just share that with someone. Like that could be the action. It doesn't need to be this big thing. What I've found is that if you start to treat it as your inner truth, the voice comes louder and louder yeah. and it starts talking more and more. It's like someone's out there going like, Hey, you should do this. And you're like, ah, shut up. I don't got time for this. And they're like, no, but you'd like, you should really do this. And you're like, no, no I don't got time for this. And it's like, okay, fine. You know, yeah. do whatever you're going to do, but like, you should really do this <laughs> versus they're like, you should really do this. And you're like, cool. I'm going to go do that. And they're like, oh, they're listening. We should tell right. them more. <laughs> oh Yeah. Then it's like constant, right? They're like, oh yeah. my gosh, we got somebody that's open to this. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> he's listening. <laughs> yeah. I almost have this visualization of like your guy just being like, we got one, <laughs> give her more, you know? Exactly. It's just like, then you become like a very open channel for information, you know, coming in. And I think once you have those experiences of where the universe just starts to support this higher information, it's really as if like, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but it's like, you feel like you are removed from it. Meaning like, this is just coming through me and things are coming in my life and things are moving into place. And I just feel like I'm like witnessing it, right? I mean, yes, I'm a human being and I'm showing up for it, but it doesn't feel like you're doing it per se, right? It just feels like I go where I'm guided to go and the right things show up and all these things start coming together. And it's a whole like opposite of this idea of work harder, work harder, yes. like try harder, run after things, chase after things, like which ultimately exhausts us. And so this period of time, if we have some time to ourselves to like meditate and go within is a good recalibration time for like resting, getting ready. Like what's the next level? What wants to come through you to be created and listening for that? Like, you know, I think sometimes we can take you know, these times of you know, people saying, oh, maybe I have to be at home for two weeks is like, oh, I just should watch Netflix and just check out from all of the fear that's going on. And I'm like, yeah, but what if you take this as, as a time to build the next steps for you to create, right, this connection, this deeper connection that so many people say they don't have time for, right? I just don't have time in my life. And now the universe is like, you have some time, right? Will you connect? Will you go within? Will you learn about yourself? And if your answer is yes, I promise you things will come from that. Yeah. Things will grow from that. Yeah. So beautiful. Uh, you're right. And by the way, you're right. There's a lot that's going to most likely need to be recalibrated in this world once this is all said and done. If again, if it goes that way um, and there's going to, there's going to need a lot of creativity on how to reform industry and capital and commerce in a lot of new and interesting ways, because for all we know, this is, going to be a more regular occurrence in our lives and we're going to have to find new ways to connect and, and create. So yeah, important. Shauna, this has been so fun. I, I like, I, I just, for anyone that's listening, whether you're on the live or, or um, you're going to listen to this on the recording, I just want you to tune in. If you were listening for a while, like how do you feel about life after having heard this type of transmission versus before you got on here and just notice if you can even notice like the subtle shift and I'll just share for me as as all this stuff is happening like I'm leaving this conversation excited by the opportunity that we have in front of us all of us um and I'm on this chain with like my friends who I love and it's just like people sharing this article and this many people are sick and this, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like tuning into that energy. I'm like, I don't, not like I want to turn a blind eye, but like, that's not really sourcing me right now or providing anything for me. Whereas this kind of, kind of conversation just enlivens me. Like I have like an energetic, like everything's kind of like tingly and excited. 
um, after something like this. So I really want to thank you for your wisdom, for doing this work and really bringing this message and light to the world. We need it more than ever. Um, I would love for you to share where people can find your book, connect with you. Um, yeah, please. Yeah, my online hub is the soul, S O U L frequency.com. And we have an awesome blog on there with lots of information. I also have a show called The Soul Frequency Show. Um, and we have little five minute episodes called Sessions, which are coaching on topics. So we're talking a lot about how to shift energy. So if you need a quick shift, that's a really good place to go to get it. And then I'm on Instagram most of the time, which my handle is at the soul frequency. And the book is The Soul Frequency, Your Healthy, Awakened, and Authentic Life. And it's on Amazon. There's audiobook and also Kindle and paperback. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on here. Thank you for playing with us. Um, super fun. Yeah, I knew. Like, I spoke to Shauna in the pre-interview. I was like, guy's going to want to be here for this one. <laughs> Little did I know. You know what's funny? Because like, I always take notes. And the topics that we were talking about doing, like, Granted, and this is how funny the world is, right? We were going to talk about energy shifts between being W-2 to birthing your mission. That was like one cool topic that we were going to talk about. Or um, how to have alignment conversation with friends and family. And we didn't do any of that because the world showed us something completely different to be with right now. So, and technically, we did all of that, too. Yeah. Can I just that, say that. like a quick like prayer for everybody and for all of us? Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. Please. Please. Um, just close your eyes if you're listening live or if you're listening on the podcast and just take a deep breath and just really land in this space. We have this beautiful space that we're sharing together as high frequency beings. And sometimes we can find the most amount of peace when we are just here together, holding hands virtually with love in our hearts and just expanding our heart center and knowing that we are safe in our hearts and that the more that we step into our heart space and open our hearts and just welcome in and allow change, allow what needs to evolve through us to evolve through us and that we hold on to each other, right? In this high frequency that we can literally like ride over any bumps that are presented to us and know that we are beyond, beyond powerful, each one of us. And as each one of us comes together and learns our power, that we are able to expand the consciousness on this planet to a place that maybe we don't even understand or know yet, but somewhere in our heart space, somewhere in our soul self, somewhere in our history, we know that we came for this, that we signed up for these moments to be together on this planet and to share this wonderful opportunity. And the more we tune into this energy, this energy right now that's coming here through me, that we know that all will be all right and that we can return to this energy anytime within our heart space and that we are always safe on this journey, that our soul is safe, that our soul knows how to move through this time. And so I just wanna thank you, Guy and Elon, for having me here and thank each one of you who listens to this episode and knowing that you are empowered, loved, and supported on your journey. All in peace. Um, so, it, so it is. So it is. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here with us. Those who are live. Thank you for listening. Those that are watching this recording. Thank you for Shauna. Thank you for Guy. Uh, be well, be safe, find peace and well-being. And if there's any way that we can support you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have an amazing day, everyone. Love thank you lots, you. everybody. Woo. Got it. Amazeballs.